This shoe is Brooks' most popular and most purchased shoe. But does this update live up to all the hype of its predecessors? It's time to run in the Brooks Adrenaline GTS 23. Hey guys, my name is Joel. Welcome back to the Time to Run channel where I do most of the research so you don't have to do it all on your own. It's time to run in a brand new pair of shoes. But before I start this review, I just need to go over a couple of disclosures first. I was kindly given this pair of shoes from Brooks for the purpose of review. They're not paying me to make this video and these opinions and observations are my own. And no one has previewed or provided feedback prior to me posting this video here. I'll provide a link to the Brooks website in the description box below as soon as Brooks has made them available for purchase. That should be around August 1st. If you like any of the products seen in the video, whether shoes I'm reviewing, apparel you've seen in the video, cameras, tech, or even nutrition I use, I provided Amazon affiliate links in the description box below. So if you like anything in the video, be sure to check out the links there. And if you don't know what an Amazon affiliate link is, it's a convenient way for you to browse and purchase products I've listed in this video. And in turn, if you both use the link and make a purchase with said link, I receive a small percentage of that sale. And because the link doesn't add any additional cost to you, you're essentially helping support me with the purchase you've made. So be sure you check out those below if you see any products you like in the video. Brooks may or may not put the Adrenaline GTS 23s up on Amazon at this specific juncture, but as soon as they do, I'll provide an Amazon affiliate link in the description there as well. Now, let's get to the review. Now to start off, I'll be covering the specs for the Adrenaline GTS 23s. This is a men's size 12 in the regular width. And I'll talk later in the video about the Adrenaline GTS 21s that I bought in a wide. So stick around for that. So if you're new to the Adrenaline GTS, this is actually considered a stability trainer with guide rails in the rear. And I'll be talking more about their relevance later in the review as well. With a 12 millimeter offset, the stack height in the forefoot measures in at 24 and 36, I believe, in the heel. It has an air mesh upper I'll be talking about, it has a gusset, and I'll be talking about the DNA Loft version in the shoe. These weighed in at 328 grams or 11.6 ounces for a single shoe, putting it, for me at least, in the middleweight category for a road shoe. Great news about the weight, you can actually expect these shoes to be slightly lighter than the last two outgoing models, the GTS 21s and the GTS 22s. The GTS 21 was actually lighter than the GTS 22s, and the 23s, these ones, are actually lighter than both of those models. As a point of reference, the men's size 12 of the Adrenaline GTS 21s, after 400 miles of running in them, at this current juncture, these actually weighed in at 330 grams. So in summary, if you put them all in order side by side, from lightest to heaviest, it would be first the 23s, the 21s, and then the 22s, which I actually haven't run it. Okay, the upper, and you know I love a breathable and comfortable mesh upper, at least during the warmer months. This is their air mesh technology, specifically helpful above the toes, then continues around the rest of the shoe, making its way to the heel. The mesh portion allows your toes enough freedom to move around, but not too much allowance that there would be forefoot slippage. A really great upper all around. And as far as the sizing, I had zero issues with these shoes regarding the size and width. I was curious about how they would feel with getting the size 12 in the regular width, and they've been roomy enough for my needs. This in contrast to the 21s, which I ordered in a 12 wide. I feel like they're actually pretty close in fit. This is not what I would consider a slim or aggressively narrow fit. I think there's actually plenty of room in the toe box for your toes to splay. It's not changed from my previous model. If anything, it's become more accommodating over the years and with each update to the model. So it works pretty great all around. And another frame of reference I can use, this is relevant pointing to a future review I'll be doing about the Hyperion Max, which is right behind me. And without getting into too many details or too far into the weeds, I would say that that shoe, while snug in its own right, is still very comfortable and a joy to run in. It's certainly comfortable enough to put in high mileage, back-to-back -back hours of running, even upwards of four-hour runs. But that's a review for a different time for the Hyperion Max. All that being said, from my perspective, the Adrenaline isn't a shoe that will crowd out your feet if you're concerned about the fit. I recommend getting this in your standard shoe size, as I did. So this colorway is called Black Hawaiian Ocean Green. I really love the bright blue and green accents. It's certainly attractive and an eye-catching colorway. 
And before I move on to the overlays, if you're finding this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's super helpful when you let me know how much you appreciate the content I'm putting out by doing so. Thanks so much. We have some really nice overlays. These are technically called 3D Fit Print that give some structure and strength to the shoe. We have the Bricks logo in this bright green section here that gives more built-in structure to the upper on both the lateral and the medial portions of the shoe. More black and blue overlays at the arch and near the midfoot and the lateral part of the upper. Around the hind foot, around the collar here, we actually have a black and blue overlay on each side which also has the 23 marking here in the back, indicating obviously the update or the version of the shoe. And making our way from the back to the front, we actually still see some reflective overlays around here as well. Around the lacing channel, more overlays ensure the eyelets have actually some more built-in strength and these blue and black sections here. So the tongue is actually really well padded. The materials are soft and forgiving, and I think it sticks to what the Adrenaline has always done and what's worked well for the series. We have a bright green sewn in stripe here on the top of the tongue to the midfoot. There's actually a loop here so you can take advantage of that to really ratchet things down if you need to. One of my favorite parts of this shoe is that we have a built-in gusset here. It's a semi-gusset. It's really nice, helpful in preventing the tongue from sliding around folding in areas where they would otherwise just cause unnecessary distractions out on your runs. I'm not sure how far back they added the gusset to the adrenaline line, but I do know that the 21s have them in there as well. The heel collar itself is very plush, very comfortable. I really like the materials that they put in here. Um, if you like to wear like no-show socks, this is actually a really comfortable uh, heel collar here. And then the uh, counter is very durable as most stability uh, trainers are for the collar. This one, let me see. Yeah, this one was pretty much the same too, so pretty durable. I don't actually know if this is just kind of broken down over the 400, 500 miles I ran in this shoe, um, but this one seems to have a little bit more flex than in this one. Um, so I would say this is probably broken down over those 400 miles, but this is a really great supportive heel. So inside the shoe, we have the insole or the footbed, depending on what you want to call it. It's removable for orthotics. However, it's honestly a really extremely comfortable insert and I really like it. If you need something different though, it's super easy to swap out. So the lacing system is pretty standard, nothing too complicated here. Laces are actually nice and thin to my liking. I like a longer set of laces myself so I can get in a double knot, but these definitely get the job done. Great lockdown and no internal foot movement. Brooks has their own nitro infused foam called DNA Loft. Many of you heard of it before. And being that version one was in their last two iterations, I'm really happy to say that this version is getting an update to DNA Loft version two. It's a softer foam overall, and it makes for a really great run experience. But don't worry, these updates still maintain a very similar adrenaline feeling as always. And let's not forget about the most obvious feature of this shoe, the stability. Whenever you see GTS, just know it doesn't actually stand for go to shoe, although many might say semantics. It's actually more specific than that. It actually means go to stability, if you didn't know that already. And this leads me to the guide rails at the base of the collar and at the top of the midsole. These create a really stable ride, a gold standard for the adrenaline that will feel identical to previous iterations. And if you're someone who knows what a medial post is and are just curious if these have it, these do not. As I mentioned earlier, these utilize guide rail technology to ensure stability. If you're not familiar with medial posts, they're typically found on or built in the outsole. Typically made of plastic, they actually sit right here, uh, right below the, the midfoot. They actually help guide the runner needing stability through their gait cycle. And as you can see, they're not present here. Medial posts actually haven't been used in the Adrenalines for a while now, making this build honestly closer to a neutral shoe with the added support of the guide rails that emulate stability trainers, which used medial posts which incidentally is why many neutral runners find these so easy to run in as well. And you don't have to be a stability runner to run in them. All right, let's cover the outsole. I love this sticky rubber they use on the bottom of the outsole. This features their Omega Flex screws for dynamic flexibility. Meanwhile, the crash pads make them durable and impact absorbing. The experience overall really gives a comfortable ride from landing to toe off. And of course, just like in true Seattle form, 
Brooks gives rainbound runners the traction they need for those autumn through spring months. With my snowy conditions, I have the convenience of putting in more miles in the Cascadia 17. That review soon to come as well. So how did it feel like running in these shoes? Regarding the run experience in these shoes, I've logged just under 20 miles so far in the Adrenalines, and I have to say, it's just as versatile as it's always been in the past. I got the same tried and true Adrenaline GTS feeling underfoot. I didn't say that right. Adrenaline GTS underfoot. Same feeling I got with the 21s. Enough cushioning underfoot to give me an enjoyable experience overall. At the same time, there's just enough stiffness underfoot to keep you nimble and agile. The DNA Loft version 2 foam was really super comfortable to churn through those daily miles, keeping all my runs comfortable while maintaining stability through my own gait cycle. All right, so what's the rotation potential? There really isn't much to say except that these firmly fit into the daily trainer category. Yes, it has the ability to be versatile, but long and short of it, daily miles is what the shoe is meant to tackle. Pair the shoe with something like the Brooks Hyperion for tempo sessions. I have that one right behind me as well, right here. Then on the opposite end of it, with recovery days, you could pair it with the Brooks Glycerin for long recovery miles. So in summary, just some final thoughts. Again, I think the update to the Adrenaline 6 to what this does best, what all Adrenalines have done best. Being that this is Brooks' flagship daily trainer, it appeals to a much wider demographic of consumers for running and even walking shoes. The Adrenaline takes on the top spot as the best-selling shoe on Brooks' rotation. The Adrenaline is also on the Amazon Picks list if you go looking for shoes there, and has been for quite a while now. According to the masses who love the shoe, it lives up to the hype, and I can't help but agree. So I just want to ask you, what's your favorite daily trainer? Have you run in previous iterations of the Adrenaline? I know a lot of you have really loved the 21s. So if you've run in the 21s or even older or the 22s, doesn't matter. Let me know in the comments below and tell me what you thought of the shoe. So as far as I know, looking on the Brooks website, these shoes are going to retail for $140. And it should be August 1st, maybe even the day that I publish this video and go ahead and check it out on the website. So that concludes my review of the Brooks Adrenaline GTS 23. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to click the like button if you did. Let me know if you have any questions by leaving them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and to turn on notifications so you don't miss any future content from the channel, including the three other Brooks shoes I have right behind me that I'm gonna be reviewing here soon. Thanks so much for watching, and if anybody asks you what your favorite running YouTube channel is, just tell them it's time to run.